the Indianapolis 500, one of three Triple Crown races and arguably out of the three, the most exciting. Seeing 33 drivers duke it out at over 200 miles per hour for 200 laps every last weekend of May is an absolute spectacle as you just don't know what's going to happen during the race. Literally anything you can think of it can happen around this magnificent circuit. Anything from amazing drives to spectacular crashes to even amazing overtakes and also the odd controversy. Cough 2023, cough. Seeing as this weekend marks the qualifying weekend for the Indy 500, meaning we are one week away from the 108th running of the Indy 500, which ironically is on the same weekend when I'm on my usual week break, I thought I would talk about a personal favourite Indy 500 that only happened a few years ago that saw a popular winner and is still talked about to this very day. This is the story of the 2021 Indianapolis 500. The 2021 Indianapolis 500 would play host to the 105th running of the famous race. After the 2020 edition of the race saw no spectators in the stands due to the pandemic at the time, the 2021 edition would welcome back fans to the stands, albeit at 40% capacity, which meant only 135,000 spectators would be allowed to attend the race. Going into the event, 35 drivers were entered into the 500, which meant that for the first time since 2019, there would be a bump session during qualifying weekend, as given the maximum amount of drivers that were allowed to take part in the race was 33, and still is to this day, it meant that two drivers out of the 35 that entered would not participate in the race. Also, for anyone who is unaware and has never watched the Indy 500, qualifying spans across two days and takes place a week before the big race happens. Just thought I would mention that in case anyone got confused when I said qualifying weekend as opposed to just saying qualifying. During Saturday qualifying, it was very clear that Chip Ganassi Racing were very strong as all four cars were able to advance into the Fast 9, including Tony Kanaan who was deputising for NASCAR legend Jimmy Johnson who was only doing a campaign on the road courses, whilst TK would take his place on the ovals. But the main talking point from Saturday qualifying was the lack of pace from the Team Penske drivers, as not only were they unable to advance into the Fast 9, but they were also weighed down the field, with Scott McLaughlin in his first ever Indy 500 qualifying down in 17th, whilst Joseph Newgarden was down in 21st, and Simon Pagano was all the way down in 26th. But by far the biggest shot for Team Penske was that of Will Power, as the then one-time IndyCar champion and the winner of the 2018 edition of the race found himself down in 31st, which meant that because he was outside the top 30 threshold, it meant that he would have to go through the bump session on Sunday in order to qualify for the race and face the possibility of becoming the first Penske driver to be knocked out on bump day and also not take part in the race since Emerson Fittipaldi and Al Unser Jr. back in 19. Thankfully for power, that didn't happen as he was able to qualify for the race, albeit on the back row in 32nd, while Simona Di Silvestro thankfully prevented Penske from being totally embarrassed as she was able to also qualify for the race in the all-female Ram Peretta Autosport team that was getting technical support from Team Penske, albeit in 33rd and last. As for Charlie Kimball and R.C. Anderson, who was entering his first ever Indy 500, they were unable to qualify for the race and were forced to sit out the Indy 500 as a result. With the bump session out of the way, the focus was now on the Fast 9 session and who would take pole for the 105th running of the Indy 500. And after being quick on the Saturday, Scott Dixon would convert the pace into Sunday to take his fourth Indy 500 pole with an average speed of 231.685 miles per hour, going 300s faster than Colton Herter, who put his Andretti in second place, whilst Renus VK was able to get his Ed Carpenter racing car on the front row as well. Ed Carpenter ensured it was a great day for his team by qualifying in 4th, with TK who was the next highest Chip Ganassi in 5th, whilst teammate Pelo was behind him in 6th. Helio Castroneves in his first Indy 500 outside of Penske started in 8th for Meyershank, behind the Andretti of Ryan hunter Ray, whilst Marcus Ericsson was 9th in the 4th Chip Ganassi racing car. After an exciting two days of qualifying, the focus was now on the main race itself the following week. 
And with the race being clear and sunny, it had all the makings of a very exciting race. So, let's see what happened. One hundred and thirty-five thousand people were in the grandstands to watch the hundred and fifth running of the Indianapolis 500, and the first Indy 500 with a crowd since the pandemic began. Going into the race, many people had tipped Scott Dixon to be the strong favourite to win the race, given the strong pace he had shown throughout qualifying and also throughout the practice sessions as well. But given this is the Indy 500, anything could happen, and little did we know later on, something would happen. Before the race started, and as the pack were making their way around for the parade laps, Will Power was pushed back into his pit box due to a lack of, as his last name says, power. Thankfully, his team were able to get his car started, and Power could retake his place at the start of the parade lap, but this only added to what was already a frustrating Indy 500 meeting. But with that drama taken care of, the focus was on the start, and who would come out on top. At the start, Dixon held on to the lead ahead of Herta, with the top three maintaining their position. However, this wouldn't last too long, as approaching turn three, Herta would go down the inside of Dixon to take the lead. Then, on the following lap, VK would follow suit at the same corner to grab P2 from the Iceman, before grabbing the lead off Herta on the following lap, which he would keep hold of for most of the early part of the race. Whilst all that was going on, Will Power, clearly with red in his eyes, got a lightning star from 32nd to move his way up to 26th in the space of two corners and was up to 25th by the end of lap 2, having passed his teammate Simon Pagenaud. Skipping forward to lap 31 and the first round of pit stops were underway, with Renus VK handing the lead back to Colton Herter as he made his first stop, locking up whilst making his way into the pit entrance. A lap later, and teammate Ed Carpenter, who was on the back of Scott Dixon, made his first stop, along with Ryan hunter Ray, who pitted at the same time. Sadly for the local hero Carpenter, his pit stop would be a disaster, as he would end up stalling his car after his pit stop had concluded, dropping him down the field once his mechanics got his car going again. Whilst that was happening, Colton Herter came in for his first stop of the race just after Scott Dixon had overtook him down the back street to take the lead. However, just before Colton made his pit stop, an incident took place in the pit lane as Stefan Wilson, younger brother of the late Justin Wilson, would end up locking the rears whilst coming into the pit lane, crashing out of the race and bringing out the first caution of the day whilst everyone else in the pit lane had to take avoiding action. This caution period came out at a worse time for Dixon, as due to his low fuel load, he was forced to make an emergency stop. However, just as he was about to pull into his box, his car spluttered to a halt due to a lack of fuel. Once his team got the car going again and were able to top his car up with fuel, he ended up being a lap down, which in turn effectively ended his chances of winning his second Indy 500. Once again, his NG500 curse struck, but he wasn't the only one to suffer from this, as the Andretti of Alexander Rossi also had to make an emergency stop, also falling a lap down, ending any chance he had of also getting his second Indy 500 win. This briefly saw Helio Castroneves take the lead of the race before he had to pit, along with many other drivers, once the pit lane was reopened under caution. This handed the lead to Herta, who thanks to the caution period happening at the same time that he was pitting, was able to get the jump on VK. Elsewhere, both Dixon and Rossi came back in, this time to fuel their cars up to the brim in order to try and carve their way through the field in the hopes of trying to get back on the lead lap. Eventually, after many laps, the pace car came in at the end of lap 46 and the race got going again, with Herta just able to hold on to the lead ahead of VK, who himself had teammate Daly right behind him, who took advantage of the caution period to move up to third, whilst Castro Neves went around the outside of Hunter Ray to move up to fourth, who himself would stop going backwards, with the likes of Palo, Oward and Sato also passing him on the restart. Heading down to turn 3, and Castro Neves wasted little time disposing of Daly around the outside to move up to third before then being re overtaken by Daly a lap later at the same corner. A quarter of a way into the race, and after being jumped by Herter during the caution period, VK would retake the lead off Herter down the pitch straight, with teammate Daly also following through to make it an Ed Carpenter 1 2. 
This lead wouldn't last too long for VK, as heading down the back straight, Daly went past his teammate before turn 3 to have his turn up at the front. Five laps later, and Castroneves would get a run on Herta down the back straight to move up into the top three, pushing Herta outside of the podium places. Lap 68 was when the next round of stops got underway, and two laps later on lap 70, VK was the first of the leaders to make their second stops, whilst Daly continued on for another lap before he made his second stop and would end up getting jumped by teammate VK after his stop had concluded. This handed the lead to Helio Castroneves, however on lap 77, Herta would do the same thing Castroneves did to him 22 laps prior to move into the lead of the race before the pair of them came in for their second stop, handing the lead briefly to Alex Palau. Helio would lose a place to Hunter Ray during the second stop as a result of a slight delay during his pit stop and would also lose a place to Alex Palau once the Spaniard came in for his second stop. Pato O'Wall would come in for his second stop at the end of lap 79, also getting the jump on Castroneves. And then, once everyone else in front came in for their second stops, between lap 81 and lap 82, VK assumed the lead once again ahead of teammate Daly. A lap later on lap 83, and O'Ward would use the slipstream of Herta to get around Palo on the pit straight, before then disposing of Herta himself on the following straight to move up into the final podium place. The following lap, Polo would get overtaken by Hunter Ray, dropping down to safe and putting himself into the clutches of Castro Neves. In front of them, and for the second time in the race, Daly would overtake teammate VK on the back straight to move back into the lead of the race. Moving on to lap 91, and nearly at half race distance, and Hunter Ray got a run on Herta down, you guessed it, the back straight, to move into fourth place and set his sights on getting the top three. Past the halfway point, specifically on lap 103, and the two Ed Carpenter racing cars would once again swap positions, with VK retaking the lead from Daly yet again down the back straight. I know it's an oval, but it seems like most of the overtakes were being done down on that straight rather than the pitch straight. The 1 2, however, wouldn't last long, as on the same lap, the pair of them would come in to begin their third round of stops, handing the lead to the McLaren of Pato Award. Six laps later, and Colton Herter would come in for his third stop, and due to Daly getting lapped by O'Ward after his pit stop, Herter was able to get the jump on Daly to split the two Ed Carpenter racing cars. A lap later, and Ryan Hunter Ray would make his third stop, also managing to get the jump on Daly, showing how much O'Ward was holding up the other hometown hero. Six laps later though, and Daly would be released by O'Ward, as the Mexican would finally make his third stop, along with Castro Neves and McLaughlin, who was right behind the Brazilian veteran. And due to staying out a lot longer, O'Ward was not only able to jump Daly, but he was also able to jump VK, who himself had also been jumped by Palou on team by the cameras, putting Palou into the lead once everyone in front of him pitted, whilst Castro Neves and McLaughlin were able to jump Herta, Hunter Ray and Daly. But sadly for McLaughlin, this wouldn't last too long, as he would get a drive through penalty, which he served immediately, due to speeding in the pit lane, which saw him nearly hit the inside wall and clipping a marshal, dropping him down the field, giving Herta, Hunter Ray and Daly a lifeline. A lap later, and unseen by the cameras, Castro Neves was able to dispose of VK to move up to third once everyone in front pitted, putting his race back on track after his slow second stop. Also unseen by the cameras, seriously nice one NBC, Polo was able to overtake O'Ward to take the lead of the race once Graham Rahal came in for his third stop. A lap later, and having closed up to the top two, Castro Neves saw an opportunity down the back straight to go down the inside of O'Ward to move up to second and set his sights on grabbing the lead off Polo. But before he had a chance to do so, and after going 73 laps under green, the second caution came out due to a scary accident involving Graham Rahal at the pit exit after he made his third stop, which was caused by his rear left tyre not being fastened on properly, narrowly avoiding being collected by any other cars, with Daly being lucky not to sustain any damage after hitting the loose tyre. It was so unfortunate for Ray Hall, as after going long on his stint, he was on the verge of rejoining near the front of the field and could have had a shot at the win. But, like all things, that's sadly racing. After only six laps, the pace car came in at the end of lap 125 and the race once again was back on, 
and not wasting any time, Castro Neves was able to get the jump on Pelo before the start of lap 126 to take the lead of the race, whilst O'Ward was also able to pass Pelo later on in the lap to move up to second. A lap later, and O'Ward wasted no time overtaking Castro Neves on the back straight, should really start putting a pound in a jar every time I say that, to move back up into the lead. Three laps later, and Castro Neves would lose another place, this time to Alex Palo, who would repass the Brazilian on the pit straight, like Helio did to him, to move up into second place. A lap later, and being frustrated that he lost the lead at the restart, Polo was able to re-overtake O'Ward at turn 3 to move back up into the lead before Castro Neves was able to repass the Mexican on the following lap. Lap 144, and it was time for the fourth round of stops, with VK once again being the first of the leaders to make his fourth stop. Over the next few laps, Palo, Hunter Ray and Herter would make their fourth stops, with Palo once again coming out ahead of VK, whilst Hunter Ray and Herter once again came out behind him, but had got out crucially ahead of New Garden, who thanks to the second caution, had quietly made his way up through the field from 21st on the grid. Three quarters into the race, and Castro Neves came in for his fourth stop, once again rejoining behind Palo, whilst a lap later, O'Ward made his fourth stop and was able to get the jump on the pair of them to grab the lead once everyone pitted. Whilst that was happening, Will Power, after climbing his way through the field, would end up dropping down the order, as he would spin while coming into the pit lane, stalling his engine in the process. A lap later, and after being jumped by O'Ward, Palo wasted no time getting back at Pato to move back into the lead once everyone in front pitted. Two laps later, on lap 155, and it was Castro Neves' turn to overtake Pato to move himself into P2. Moving forward to lap 170, and after being behind Palo for a long time, Castro Neves finally made his move on the Spaniard at turn 1 to retake the lead of the race just as the pair were coming up to traffic. Meanwhile, whilst Newgarden was in for his final stop, Simona Di Silvestro would become the third driver to have her car facing the wrong direction in the pit lane after she too lost the back end coming into the pits. The next five laps came and went, and the top three made their final stops of the race, with Palo getting the jump on Castro Neves, whilst O'Ward once again rejoined behind the pair of them. With the top three having finished their final stops, it was now a sprint to the finish, and it was very clear that the race was between these three drivers. A lap after Palo made his final stop, Castro Neves wasted no time disposing of the Spaniard at turn three to retake the lead once everyone in front made their final stops. Throughout the next few laps, the top three would duke it out against each other, whilst elsewhere, Hunter Ray's race would go down the drain, as like with McLaughlin earlier on, he would also receive a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane on the same lap that Polo and Earl Ward made their final stops. Lap 179, and Polo would retake the lead from Castaneves around the outside at Turn 1, whilst Earl Ward watched on. Seven laps later, and the pair would duke it out again, switching places throughout the lap, with Castro Neves passing Palo on the pit straight, and Palo repassing him on the back straight. It was becoming more and more clear that it would be a straight fight between Palo and Castro Neves, the youngster versus the veteran, the kid versus the elder statesman, and no one had a clue who would come out on top. For Palo, he was looking for his first ever Indy 500 win, whilst for Castro Neves, he was looking to become the fourth driver to win a record fourth Indy 500. With seven laps to go, and on the same lap Felix Rosenquist pitted, Castro Neves went around the outside of Palo at turn one to retake the lead once Sato made his final stop. A lap later, and Sato finally made his final pit stop, meaning the battle between Castro Neves and Palo was now officially for the lead. With five laps to go, Palo would do the same move Helio did to him two laps prior to move back into the lead of the race. Palo would then use the slipstream of Rosenquist in front to try and stay ahead of Castro Neves, and it looked like, despite Helio's best efforts, that Palo was going to grab his first ever Indy 500 win. But Helio would thankfully get a lifeline, as Rosenquist was forced to pit with four laps to go, as he became the third driver to receive a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane, meaning Palo had to be on the defensive once again. With two laps to go, Castro Neves, despite Palo's defensive attempts, would go around the outside of the Spaniard to move back into the lead at turn one to a huge roar from the crowd. Palo, however, was not going to give up and began to try and find a way back past Helio. 
starting the final lap of the race and the pair of them would come up to a huge pack of cars who were all racing each other for position. Given how many cars were there, you would think Polo would take advantage. However, using his experience, Helio played it smart and used Ryan Hunter Ray slipstream in front to keep Polo behind him down the back straight. Keeping Polo behind him, Helio blasted out of the final corner with Hunter Ray slipstream to win his fourth Indianapolis 500. It was an amazing and emotional moment and one that millions of fans around the world were happy to see. 12 years after he last won the famous race and 4 years after his last win, Spider-Man as he is nicknamed due to his celebration he likes to do, was back on the top step of the podium and it was also special in that it was his first win outside of Penske. For Polo, it was so gut-wrenching that he just missed out on his first Indy 500 win, but his second place finish in that race would prove crucial later on in the season as he would go on to win his first IndyCar title at the finale in Long Beach beating Joseph Newgarden to the title. For Castro Neves, this is to date his last win in IndyCar, but given he is taking part in the race again this year with the same team, who knows if he still has it in him to win a record 5th Indy 500. On a weekend which saw crowds return to the 500 after the event was held behind closed doors in 2020 due to the pandemic, the fans were rewarded with an amazing race and were also rewarded with a very popular winner. This is why the 2021 edition of the Indy 500 is my personal favourite 500 and it makes me wonder if any 500 in the future will ever top it. Spider-Man returned and it was an amazing spectacle.